Today, I thought I'd take another quick look at DevPack 3, uh, the software from HiSoft, which is an assembler for the Amiga that was used quite a lot back in the day. It's assembler, debugger, editor. It's the whole shebang, the whole package. And um, this works. I've done a video on it before if you want to know all about it. But it's quite good. Um, it was used by a lot of software back in the day. It was probably used to make a lot of games. It's got a little notebook about programming 68,000. And it's got the disks. And here they are. You get four because two of them are for Workbench 1.3, which I'm not going to use. These two over here are for Workbench 2. One of them's got the program on it. The other one's got the include files you need to assemble stuff. So this is quite easy to use because you can just boot this disk and it will actually totally work. So I'll just show you that now. Well, it would if you put the right disk in. That was the wrong disk. That's the include disk. This is the program disk. So it should take a few seconds to boot because obviously it's floppy. But when you do this, it just basically boots a version of like Workbench 2, a quite a cut down version. And the assembler does work on this. There you go. So it took quite a while for that screen to come up. Welcome to HiSoft DevPack, Amiga 3.01. Um, I think Workbench 2 likes to say this about mapping keys, but I'll just say no. So I'm doing this on, uh, this is Kickstart 3.2 and the, the version of Workbench that's installed on the disk is 3.2 as well. So there's the, there's the disk. And we just go in here to DevPack and we run DevPack. So it's taking quite a while. And it comes up with a blank page, but we can actually just assemble that blank page and it should work. Um, here we go. So it's having to load the assembler now. There it is. Genam Macro Assembler. So this code's from this program's from 1991. And there you go. It assembled nothing, but it did it successfully. And that's it. So we want to install that on the hard drive. So let's give that a go. So I'll just reboot into Workbench 3.2 on the hard drive. We can take a look at what the manual says. It says to install DevPack on the hard drive, we recommend you drag the DevPack draw icon onto your hard disk using the Workbench. And then it goes on about some steps for, for Workbench 1.3, which you're not interested in. Uh, it says we also recommend copying the contents of one or both include disks according to which operating system you're developing for. So you might want to develop for 1.3 on two. So you could copy those as well if you want to. But I'll just copy the Workbench 2 ones. Um, it says the dev pack directory should be normally added to the Amiga DOS command search path to allow convenient use from shell, CLI or scripts. So that appears to be optional, but we can we can do that just to make it easier. You'll be able to type just dev pack or assemble on the command line and that would work. So let's give that a go and let's see where we get to. Let me just shut this drive up. I do actually have, um, I've already made some ADFs of those disks that, that are in there. So I'm going to use the ADFs, but because uh, Workbench 3.2 can mount them, but you could just put the disk in. This will just be a bit quicker this way. Uh, there it is. DevPack 3, uh, the Workbench 2 program disk, and there's the include disk. So if I just double click that, it can mount it. And there it is. So that's my, that's my floppy, well, my version of the floppy disk there. So I'm going to make a folder on my drive. I've got a drive called Stuff here, which is a hard drive. And I'm going to make a folder called dev pack in here. Um, there we go. And I'm going to drag it. I'm going to, so it says to drag the dev pack folder, which is just this. So this is the floppy disk now. So we can just drag that into here. And that's it. So we've copied, I think, everything we need off the program disk. The rest of it is just a Workbench 2 startup. So we don't really need... Um, any of that. So if we just run that from here now, let's just see what works. So we'll just run dev pack and we'll just assemble nothing, which is like what we did before. And that actually totally worked. That is actually quite surprising. So, oh, I think I know why that's working. It's working because I've mounted, I've mounted this drive. So let me 
just reboot and I'll show you what happens after I reboot. So I think what's happened is with the floppy disk in the drive or the equivalent of floppy disk, it's actually found, it's actually needed something off that disk and it's found it. And I can only tell you that because I've tried to install this before and it doesn't work. So after I reboot here and the ADF will be gone and the floppy disk's out of the drive, uh, we'll see what it actually does. But that was reasonably successful. So let's just go to, let's go back to our folder, dev pack. Let's just run it again. And let's try assemble now. And there you go. So that, there's the problem. It, it asks for the dev pack three drive. And as far as I can tell, um, the files that it's asking for are actually already on the hard drive, but it doesn't search for them by path. It just asks for them by that name. So although it says in the manual that you should like map the C path to actually this folder, that just makes it more convenient to start the program. This still doesn't work. So what I need to do is to actually assign that volume name, devpack3-2.0, and assign that volume name to the like the equivalent of the folder that I've got it on. Uh, and I'll show you that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a new shell. And I'll just do the command that we want. So what we want to do is assign, and it was devpack3 hyphen 2.0. We want to assign that volume to wherever I've I've put the um, wherever I put dev pack on my hard disk. So it was stuff. It was whoops, sorry, stuff utils dev pack. Now notice there was a second folder in there called dev pack, but I don't want to assign it to that because I want it to make that. I want it to assign that folder to be what the volume was on the hard drive. So that that like floppy disk did have a folder called dev pack inside it. And so does this folder on my hard drive. Um, so I think in theory, that might fix my problem. So let's, let's run dev pack again and let's see if it'll assemble now. And there we go. So we're back to, we're back to assembling now. So all I've done is I've told it that there is actually a volume called dev pack three hyphen 2.0 but it's not actually there. So what I really want to do is add that to my startup because otherwise I have to type that in every single time. So let's do a new shell. Oops, that's a new folder, not a new shell. Let's do a new shell and let's edit this startup on my actual hard drive. So it should be in S, it's not actually a hard drive, it's an SD card by the way, but you get the idea. So I'm going to edit the user startup sequence and I'm going to put that command in there. So it's user startup. And there we go. So this is my user startup sequence. So I just want to put that command that I had in there. So it's dev pack. Whoa, I start Dave Poo. Dev pack three hyphen 2.0. So I want to assign that volume to stuff utils. Whoops. Stuff is a volume name utils dev pack. I think that's right. Uh, it's got an add command there, but I don't need to do add because this is going to be the only one of these volumes on here. So I don't think I need the add command. Um, and I think that's it. And I type escape SA to save in this ed program and then escape Q to quit. And then if we reboot, we should get this working right out of the box. So let's see what we get now. So we've done a we've done a fresh reboot. We'll go to dev pack and let's just run it and let's see if we can assemble nothing. Assemble. There we go. So it totally works now. It doesn't complain about anything. Everything's all nice. The other thing they suggested was um, just to add it to the startup path so that you, you don't have to type it from anywhere. So what we could do there for that one, it doesn't actually tell you how to do it. It's a sign. So C is the command volume on the Amiga. So we want to sign stuff, utils, dev pack. And now I do want to assign that actual folder where everything is. And I want to add to that because I don't want to overwrite the command folder on here. 
Otherwise, it'll just overwrite it. I want to have a second one that it can look in as well. So once I do that, I can put that in my startup as well if I want to. And that just means that from here, I can type dev pack. Well, let's go back to the root. Um, oh. Let's go back to, how do we go back to the root? I thought it was that. Oh, that just goes back one folder. Don't know. But either way, I'm not in, I'm not in the correct folder here. But if I type dev pack, it just runs and I can run the assembler as well. So that's pretty cool. And then the other thing is let's try opening. Oh, well, we haven't got the example projects. So let's copy the rest of the stuff that we need um, onto here. Oh, actually, we have got the example projects. I'll take it all back. They're actually in that folder. So let's open one of those examples. So let's open the Hello World example and let's see if that compiles. Now, this does have some include files, so I suspect this isn't going to compile. But it actually does. So where is it finding these includes from? Because they're not on this disk, I think. Uh, can I run that? Oh, there you go. That totally ran. Well, I don't actually know where it's finding where it's finding these includes when I haven't actually. Maybe they're on the hard drive somewhere. I don't know about that one. Oh, this one's actually got a deliberate error in it <laughs> that it actually tells you about in the manual. Yeah, so that totally works. Anyway, so there it is. So if we wanted to copy the includes in as well, we could copy. I think you just copy them into this folder, but I, I don't know why it's finding those include files. That's the bit that's not making much sense to me. It seems like it's... It just seems like it's finding these includes from somewhere and I don't know where they would be. No errors found. Yeah, so it, it's finding intuition I that must be mapped onto this hard drive somewhere. But it's certainly not in a folder here. So, yeah, I don't know how that's happening. Maybe they're part of Workbench 3.1 and that's just working. But either way, I'll leave it there. If you do want the includes off the disk, you just copy them into there. Um, but for some reason, I don't need it. But that's quickly how to install DevPack on your hard drive if if you are so interested in going old school and coding some you know, machine language stuff. There's the little book. If you want to go old school and code some machine language stuff on your Amiga, that's the install of DevPack 3. So uh, this company's still in business. You could ask them for a copy. I don't think they make this anymore, but there you go. So that was my quick hard drive install. And um, hopefully we'll be using a bit of this in the future and try and do something with it.